Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the February 28th meeting of the Glendale City Council. Mr. Kasakian, roll call please. Council Member Garpedian. <coughs> Najarian. Here. Sananian. Here. Mayor Devine. Here. Next item. Next item is the flag salute, which will be led by Council Member Najarian, followed by the invocation. Thank you. Will everyone please join me in the salute to our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for this evening's invocation. February is Black History Month, and tonight this invocation pays respect to every African American for their contribution to the fabric of our American cultural tapestry. The educator and black leader Booker T. Washington accurately observed that one man cannot hold another man down in the ditch without remaining down in the ditch with him. Our nation has come a long way climbing out of the ditch in which the African American was kept throughout slavery and institutionalized prejudice in this country. Let us pray and hope that the wounds of those who were treated inhumanely throughout our nation's racially fractured history will heal over time, and that never again in our lives, nor in the lives of those who follow us, our children, our grandchildren, and others, will one American hold another American down in the ditch for reasons of race, religion or creed, or any other ill-conceived reason or purpose. Let us pray that our city leaders act in accordance to our founding principles of this great country, that all people are created equal, and together we are united as one. Amen. Amen. And uh, may the minutes show that uh, Councilmember um, Garpetian has arrived. Next item, please. Next item is the, agenda, uh, is the report of the clerk. The agenda for the February 28, 2017 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, February 23rd, 2017 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. And next? Presentation and appointments. 3A is agenda previews for the meetings of Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. Ms. Beers. Madam Mayor, members of the City Council for the Glendale Housing Authority for March 7th, we have no business agenda items. We do have a joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Housing Authority to commence at 3 p.m. This is Director of Community Development and Community Services and Parks, and this is regarding an assessment of fair housing plan in accordance with federal grant funding requirements. That evening for the council meeting to commence at 6 p.m., we have a number of consent items. General Manager of Glendale Water and Power. This is a water conservation and education program report. General Manager of Glendale Water and Power. Uh, a contractual um, issue as it relates to Grayson Unit Number 9. Uh, gas Turbine, Director of Community Services and Parks. This is transportation services related to youth programming. Director of Community Services and Parks, Environmental Impact Report for the Wilson Middle School Multipurpose um, Field Project. Chief of Police, this is regarding the 2015 UOC grant. Um, under adoption of ordinances, we have Director of Community Development. This is regarding the ADU urgency ordinances. It's the extension if it goes forward this evening. Um, under action, we have two items, General Manager of Glendale Water and Power, agreements with Sequoia Telecom Associates, Wilcon, and 1X2 for fiber optic business plan implementation support. And Chief of Police, this is regarding the agreement with uh, Caruso Management <coughs> Company for supplemental police services. And that concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, we have some very special people to thank tonight. Uh, as, you, as you all know, the recent rainstorm was the strongest storm in the past six years and created an unfamiliar scene in Los Angeles and around our community as well. As a result of staff's dedication to providing exceptional service and ensuring the safety of all residents, power outages were brief, fallen trees were removed safely, roads were cleared, and folks who needed emergency assistance got it within minutes. I want to give a special thanks, we all want to thank, the city employees who worked during the storm and helped keep our streets safe, clear debris, turn lights back on, repair water breaks, and maintain the high level of service that Glendale residents rely on. If you watch the screen, I will uh, in give you some of the numbers of incidences that they were responsible for uh, handling. Feeder outages, seven. Electric calls, 47. Sheared hydrant due to mudslide, one. Water main break, two. Private trees cleared, 11. Public trees cleared, nine. 
Broken hanging tree limbs cleared six. Trees cleared 10. One incident involved clearing a tree that had fallen on the roof of a Glen Oak home, which was pictured in the slide. So tonight I'd like to ask all of the public works, the parks, police, fire, and GWP staff that are in attendance tonight to please come to the podium. We have a special thank you for all of you. Um, you still watching the uh, film? Please come up. I know I went to a, a home on Cialito that uh, the hillside had come down on them. They had no electricity. It was an, an older woman with two grandchildren, no electricity. Uh, I was about to run home and call the GWP to try to get help for them. But as I walked down the driveway, who should appear but GWP and the crew, and they told me that they would have the lights on and electricity on in a few minutes, and I know that they did. So we want to thank you by presenting you with uh, pins from our city. So if I can ask all of my fellow colleagues to come on down with me. Would you like to say a few words? I know you were up all night, so would anybody like, you know, for I don't know how many nights you were awake and working out there in the pouring down rain. Does anyone like to say a few words? Chris, um, anyone? Go ahead. I'm Brian Brown, GWP. Hi, Brian. And we'd like to thank you for the recognition for the, the work the guys did. Um, you know, we have an outstanding group of guys out of the UOC, as, as Public Works does too. And uh, these guys are pretty dedicated employees. I mean, they, to send them home with people out of power does not happen. You know, there's people out. These guys will not go home. They will stay here until people's power is back on and everything's taken care of. So, um, there, we have a very dedicated group of group of men and women working out of the UOC, and I'd like to thank you for the recognition. And we thank you. I've gotten emails, thank you know, thanking not thanking me and thanking all of you for the the fast work that you did. And I know I heard on the news where people in LA had were hours without electricity, but you guys were on the job and and you did a fantastic. Uh, amount of work. Thank you so much. So we'd like to present these to all of you. I'll take them down that we can. Did you fill it out? You haven't filled it out? Are these two things or uh, I know. Who has a You got one? Yeah. Not yet. But this one is a work. This one is an event. I know which one is. She sent an email. That's a great way to get the meeting started. Next item. 
Next item is the consent calendar, including minutes following our routine and may be acted upon by one motion. Any member of council or the audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such request before a motion is proposed. Do I have and any? there is one card submitted uh, from the public. Or C. Okay. Would anyone like to move the other two items? I'll move the balance of the consent calendar. Thank you. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Garpedian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Devine? Yes. And would you please read 4C into the. 4C uh, is Chief minutes? of Police regarding DNA mixture interpretation software, uh, probabilistic. Probabilistic genotyping software. I will not try <laughs> to say that mouthful. three times yes, it is. <laughs> quickly. Licenses, annual upgrades, technical support, and training. C1 is a motion authorizing a purchase order for Niche Vision Inc. Resolution appropriating $100,000. Okay. Um, do we? I just have a speaker on this card. So, uh, Chinook Ramirez, please. <coughs> Thank you very much. Safety and security is crucial to the survival of a healthy, vibrant, and safe communities. A lot of your Latino criminal gangbangers have deliberately bent and or damaged their vehicle license plates, the front and the rear of their vehicles, so they won't be easily seen or recorded on street cameras. I've noticed over the years, if you look at all these gangbangers and their vehicles, you will notice that their license plates are tampered and or not, not visible to the uh, naked eye. And so, um, and a lot of them have also wiped with bleach and faded uh, the numbers and the letters. So it is important that we enforce the vehicle code because it is a violation. And the Glendale Police Department and all law enforcement agencies must enforce the rule of law. It is a violation. Put them in jail and report them to ICE and hasta la vista deportation at full throttle. Again, we must enforce the rule of law. God bless Donald Trump. And that's what he wants to do is make us safer all over, not just in Glendale, but all over America. Again, go after these gangbangers. Let them straighten out those license plate numbers and buy new ones. And um, God bless Donald Trump and Jefe, who brought back balls and masculinity to America. So enforcement of the rule of law is, not, uh, is, is, is now the, the rule of law of America. Again, Donald Trump wants no criminal, illegal felons or gangbangers vandalizing and um, creating uh, pu public safety nuisances. And again, America is a priority. He wants to make America safe, secure, and private for all legal law-abiding citizens. God bless Donald Trump and our United States military and all our beloved pilots. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion for the item, please? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Garpedian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Devine? Yes. Mayor, thank you. And uh, next we have uh, City Council and staff comments. Thank you. Well, comments? Uh, Council member Garpedian? Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Sorry I was late for a few minutes, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of the last storms, we had few, uh, as was indicated today, we had the, some sun trees down, and uh, I was at one of them, uh, the one on Upichi, and I got a call when I got there. The crew was there, the cranes were there, and Rubik Gulanian was there. So I want to acknowledge Rubik and Public Works, as well as GWP, they did a great job uh, removing the trees without damaging any more of the, the pool equipment. It was almost hitting the pool equipment. Uh, but the other thing is, I think uh, some of these trees, the pine trees especially, we need to have a, a, maybe a survey or inspection done. I know we cannot go into the root of every tree and find out how deep they are or how uh, stable they are, but let's, I'm just asking to, to look into having a, a plan uh, to, to inspect some of these trees and see if the ones, if we find out that some of them are really dangerous, to remove them before they fall uh, in next next storm. Pasadena has the same issues for some of the trees were uh, the fallen on the, on, the, on the houses and it was very dangerous. Uh, the other 
thing that I want to talk about is there was a, a an article published in News Press regarding SCAG and the feasibility study for the uh, the streetcar uh, in Glendale, and just a point of clarification that it, at the end of the article it says SCAG's allocated funds will now head to a review committee before the final before final consideration. The final consideration is done. The, the funding is done, and it's coming to plan. Also, just wanted to make one clarification on that. Also, uh, on a lighter note, on a fun stuff, uh, there is a car show being. Do we have that, Mr. City Clerk? Do we have that flyer? Up right now. If we do, if not, I can just read over it. Yes, we do. There's a car show being organized. Uh, by Verdugo Woodlands Dads Club and uh, the Rotary Club of Glendale, noon Rotary, unfortunately. I hope that the Sunrise Rotary will join, uh, join this group. Uh, it's called Cars for Cops, and all the proceeds will go to Glendale Police Foundation. It will be on April 2nd, uh, 9 to 1 p.m., 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., a lot 34, 17, 26, Kenyatta Boulevard, across the street from Verdugo Park. Uh, you can bring your cars if you want to participate. It's $25 a car. You can showcase your car. You can meet your fellow uh, car lovers and, and hang out and, and raise money for a good cause. It's called Car for Cops, and all the proceeds will go to uh, Glendale Police Foundation. Uh, what else do I have to say, Madam Mayor? That's all I have. Madam Mayor, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Njarian? Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. We had talked about a bicycle event for the city of Glendale, uh, similar to a Ciclavia <coughs> called an Open Streets event that Metro was uh, going to be sponsoring. I uh, would like everyone to know that that is coming to fruition. Staff has been working very hard on that. And we have a uh, graphic for that, uh, Mr. Uh, city Clerk. This will be called an Open Streets event. Uh, June 4th, I believe, uh, is the date it's going to be. We're going to be closing off uh, Brand Boulevard, and this is called Glendale Meets Atwater. So it's going to be Glendale Boulevard, South Brand, excuse me, South Brand to the uh, northern part of Glendale uh, Avenue, I believe, uh, is what they call Brand as it extends uh, into Atwater. And uh, that will be very fun. The funding for this is a little tricky. Metro is kicking in 180,000. I believe Glendale has about a 44,000 share of that, but we're gonna see, because we're early on in the process, we're gonna see if we can get it fully funded by Metro, so Glendale doesn't have to, and let the cities at the end of the, the line uh, worry about funding if there's any left, or some are actually dropping out. They're not uh, fully committed to this. So good work to all the staff that's doing this, and we'll give you updates uh, as it uh, gets closer. It's been a, a fun event in other parts of L.A. County, and I think it'll be fun also uh, here in Glendale. Uh, the next item that I hopefully would get some uh, support on would be a review of our uh, parks and library impact fee, uh, a historical perspective, and perhaps going forward, to make sure that the new units that are being built in Glendale uh, are paying the appropriate share towards parks and library. I don't want an exhaustive study. I don't need to start the Nexus study, but just a discussion as to whether we think it's uh, important to look at that and to, uh, to see if it's properly uh, set uh, at rates that are current uh, to the expenditures. Would anyone support that? Sure. I'll support that. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing I'd like to uh, bring forth is to have uh, staff bring us a discussion of a uh, traffic mitigation fee. This is a fee that is separate from the parks <coughs> and library impact fee, but actually a fee which would be assessed new construction units to uh, mitigate the traffic and congestion impact that they cause. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to that, and I'm just asking that it come forward and we take a look at that and see if such a, uh, such a course of action is feasible. Would anyone support that? 
Okay, I just want to, I just want to uh, uh, explain it a sure. little bit more. It's that I'll support it. Yeah, it's it's we we charge new development for the impact they have on parks, um, but this would be a study to see if if an impact can be uh, specified and identified on traffic. If we have to widen a lane, if we have to uh, put in extra crossings or something like that, that they would bear their fair share. And of course, it's not an action, but it's just an attempt to study uh, to study that. Um, and the last thing, Madam Mayor, I want to clear up. About two months ago, maybe even longer, I suggested that the city uh, consider joining the Contract Cities Association. Uh, we're currently members of the Independent Cities <coughs> Association. And I want to, I, I got some feedback recently that uh, some of our employees felt that that indicated that we were going to immediately begin contracting out the services that we currently provide. And I want to assure everyone that that is not the case. And my sole uh, intent on uh, becoming part of the contract cities is they have a much more robust professional development uh, program where the other cities get together and talk about issues that are of a mutual interest. And it does not in any way mean we're con going to be contracting out or indicate a change in our focus on contracting out services that we currently provide. Um, and perhaps as council members, we understood what contract cities do, where they meet, how many people are in their organization. Uh, but members of the public in our workforce might not have understood that clearly. So I just want everyone to know it's not a shift of our policy. It's just a more robust professional development and networking system that contract cities have. And, and it was also my understanding that they have uh, uh, kind of more clout in <coughs> Sacramento uh, than some of the other organizations do. Um, and so that was another reason that, that we joined. It was not about us contracting out. Right. Any just other comments? Short, just a short comment. Sure. So this cyclovia or this mini cyclovia that's slowly materializing, um, <coughs> I remember when I was mayor, I asked specifically to have the Ciclovia in the city. So to the extent the, the staff is working on this, um, can we make sure that all council members are updated on the progress? Because I haven't had a progress report in, I don't remember since when. That's all. Anyone else? Okay, well, I have a lot of good news, I think. Um, first of all, I want to start by um, mentioning um, a uh, a summit that was held here in Glendale that perhaps a lot of people didn't know about. It was a Los Angeles <coughs> Consular uh, Summit. We had 40 council generals come to a summit uh, to be introduced to our city, uh, our businesses, um, our staff. I know Council Member Garpetian was there. Uh, it was quite successful. It was held at ABC. They did a panel discussion on the news media and how they are actually trying to bring the truth uh, to, uh, to all of you. Uh, it ended up being a very successful event, uh, and uh, hopefully we can uh, do it again. I want to uh, give kudos to Dan Bell for bringing that to fruition, and Jennifer McLean, and, and all the staff, Eliza, and all the staff in uh, economic development and in management services. Uh, it was uh, quite an honor to meet <coughs> all the consul generals from different countries. Uh, it was uh, a quite an amazing event. So I thank you all and congratulate you all. Um, I think someone I, else wants to be called out who did hard work on that. Uh, who would that um, be? Dan Bell. I called no, him. No, it wasn't Dan. I don't think I Dan had anything to do with it. I, I think he's saying. Christine. No, Christine. Christine. Powers. Christine, Powers. Christine, yes. Powers. There we Where go. Christine? Yes, yeah. She, yeah, she's not yeah. Let's give let's credit where credit is due. Exactly. Christine was instrumental. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, last night I attended the Glendale Young Professionals 5th anniversary and uh, met some of the uh, uh, supposed maybe leaders of the future, um, CEOs and professionals, and I told them possibly even a mayor in the group. So uh, that was uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, quite an honor, and I congratulate them for uh, having the forethought and the um, 
the leadership to uh, bring about an organization that is like a right arm of our local chamber of commerce uh, for young people. Uh, I would like to request from uh, Mr. Galanian and uh, Public, Public Works, uh, I've gotten a re uh, an inquiry. Uh, there's some concern about the crosswalk at Cedar and Broadway. And I think that was just installed. Uh, I, drove, I drove up Broadway to see what was going on. The traffic does go very fast there. I can see the danger that could possibly um, uh, occur. And so I'd just like to have uh, staff look into uh, a possible traffic light at that location uh, just to s ensure the safety of, of our residents and make sure that that, that is a safe uh, uh, crosswalk and uh, no one is injured. I also want to uh, give kudos to our police department. I know uh, uh, Carl Povolitis was here. I don't see him, uh, but uh, I received an, a, a very nice letter from the mayor of the city of Whittier, and uh, he was thanking our uh, police department and our city uh, for those that uh, attended uh, the uh, services for the fallen officer in their city. And uh, he um, just said that we have people representing us, and he thanks really fine people representing us, and he thanks us for reaching out. So I wanted to make sure that the police department and those that attended those services uh, realized that it was appreciated. And finally, and this is very exciting news uh, for me, <coughs> and uh, you, as you all know, uh, April is um, the Armenian Genocide uh, month of remembrance, and in our city we particularly uh, celebrate or, or remember the week of the 29th. Uh, a few years back I started to talk to um, uh, Commissioner Ara Oshagon about bringing Eyewitness, his art exhibit, to Glendale. Uh, it had such a profound impact with the city of L.A. and the people that went to see it, and I thought it would only be fitting that it come to our city as well. And so in conjunction with uh, our, the Week of Re Remembrance here and the grand reopening of our library, our central library, he is going to uh, erect, construct the eyewitness in our central park. Uh, there could be a, a, um, an exhibit on the Paseo connecting brand to the library so people who are shopping and dining in that area will know to come to the park. It will be there the week of remembrance and then until about uh, the first week of June. Uh, so I'm really happy about this. I'm proud of uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Oshagon uh, for having produced this wonderful work of art. And I thank Cindy Cleary for her work at getting this um, uh, accomplished. And uh, I look forward to, um, to celebrating the Week of Remembrance in a lot of different ways, and especially with this art exhibit. It should be fairly uh, just a fabulous um, uh, work of, uh, for the city. It will bring a lot of people here, I know, and uh, uh, it's, it's a, a real feather in our cap, I think, to have him as one of our community members on our commission. He's going to be the curator of the um, uh, Museum uh, of um, Remembrance, Remembrance right. in the library, and uh, we will also get to appreciate and enjoy his, his art. And uh, that concludes my remarks. So we'll look forward to that. I have a couple of cards for our next item, which is? Community event announcements, followed by three-minute general public comment. <clears throat> Thank you. Lisa Babari, followed by Evelyn Her Harrigan. Harrigan. Good evening, Mayor Devine and City Council members. My name is Lisa Bubari. I am the founder of Heal Within, a healing center in Glendale, and also an event called the 3E. And this year, we'll be celebrating our fifth year. Thank you. The 3E is an event uh, dedicated for women, which we call it this year. Our theme is Ignite the Best in You, because it's about open heart and mind to experience uh, a day of a, a lifetime. Because women worldwide, 
are clamoring for more insights, tools, knowledge to help them achieve success and fulfillment in their life and at work, personally, professionally. This day will be a day to reward themselves. So we've got incredible speakers. Our mistress of ceremonies will be Palmira Perez. Our speaker, guest speaker, is going to be Silva Kotikian. She is the co-director of Glendale Adventist ER. And we have incredible, powerful panel of speakers, which is Dr. Nelly Farnudi Zahiri, our own Elisa Glickman from Glendale Arts, and Jenny Mankarian, plus myself, who will be speaking. It is a day to unveil our inner strength, recognize our thought patterns, and change things. We also have vendors. There's going to be drum circle, music, and including lunch. So I believe this will be one of the most powerful $97 spent for the day of being empowered and inspired. Our speakers will be talking about their challenges and how they have overcome challenges to be where they are. And we will be helping our audience to touch emotionally and through soulful experiences and uh, exercises, guided visualization, and so much more. The day is on March 11th. It will be held at the Embassy Suites in Glendale, and it's an all-day event from 9 to 4, and you may purchase the tickets on our website, which is healwithin.com, or it's on my seat, or it's my seat. Dot com 3e. Thank you, Lisa. Always Thank a you good so event. much. Always a great event. Congratulations on your fifth. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next, uh, Evelyn Horgan and uh, then Lilia Avagian. Thank you very much, Honorable Mayor. Uh, city, Honorable City Council members and city staff and Glendalians. Thank you for the opportunity to announce again the upcoming uh, Crop Hunger Walk for Glendale and the communities of the foothills. This is our 22nd annual walk. And it it's, makes five look like <laughs> <laughs> We are so proud to be doing this. <laughs> um, it is March 5th, one week uh, coming up this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Um, we uh, begin and end the walk at Incarnation Catholic Church. But this is an interfaith, community-wide event. Uh, we are among the top 110 uh, crop walks that happen over a thousand crop walks happen across the United States, and we are up there, a hundred and tenth place in raising funds for. Uh, we help our our local group has raised funds for three food banks, uh, food pantries, and two food voucher programs locally and up in Tahunga to serve these these communities. Um, overall, we've raised over $428,000 in the past 21 years. And I'd like to take an opportunity to thank the many hundreds of walkers and their sponsors and uh, recruiters at various local churches and the community that have come to our crop walks to help raise these funds. Uh, in particular, I would like to uh, mention our appreciation to a donor from Vallejo Drive Seventh-day Adventist Congregation, who has been a very big supporter of the walk. Um, so I uh, <laughs> please just show up if you don't have a, a, a walker registration envelope already. Just show up, and we will register you. You can go on uh, the internet to cropHungerWalks.org and then uh, fill in the, the, 
map there with Glendale CA and you will see information about our walk. Uh, it does not cost you anything to register. Please, Glendale, come out to the walk. Many walks charge anywhere from $35 to $50 to walk, and we don't charge anything. Okay, but we do and the want date, to raise the date walk. and time. Sunday, March 5th at 1 p.m. Kickoff is at 1 30. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Petty has yes. a question for you. So, where does it start again? Starts and ends at Incarnation, and we go down Brand Boulevard to Lomita, across to Louise, back up to Louise to Wilson, then over, oops, one, one block to Brand, and then back up to Incarnation. And you and, have another and one yes, on Yes, we do have a permit. Yes, we do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. And uh, uh, you have another one on March 26th? No, this is another event. That's another event. Okay, I, that's why I was confusing. Okay. okay, thank you. Sorry about thank that. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. March 5th, 1 o'clock, Incarnation Church. Right, okay. show up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lilia Avignon? Oh, good evening. Uh, the March 26th is mine, yeah, so, yeah. but I'm going to start yeah. off. Um, since pa uh, Mayor Devine mentioned about commemorating Armenian genocide, I would actually like to start off with thanking the Glendale community uh, for commemorating Armenian genocide for the past 17 <coughs> years on a city level. And uh, this event that I'm actually going to present right now, it's commemorating Armenian genocide again. And I, not only I, we, uh, all the organizers thought that it is very important for city of Gl for the event to have happened at city of Glendale since the city, as I already mentioned, commemorates it, commemorates it for 16 years already. Um, so this is a play in conjunction, event in conjunction with Voice of Armenians from New York and the Armenian Entertainment Production uh, here based in Glendale. And this is a play, theatrical play, uh, based on a, a book by a Turkish writer, Kemal Gyalçin who currently lives in Germany because he had some hardships in Turkey after he tried to publish his book about Armenian genocide. He, uh, when he first tried to publish it, it was destroyed right away, the 3,000 uh, copies, and then after he went through lawsuits and all kind of stuff to be able to finally publish it. So this uh, play had been uh, performed six times already, thrice in uh, East Coast, twice in New York, and one once in New Jersey, and three times in Armenia, and all the time all six times the Turkish writer was present. Now the Turkish writer will be coming to Glendale, so we would definitely like to welcome him for his brave actions for the past um, decades. And um, he will be there to, um, again, um, apologize uh, for the <coughs> Armenian genocide and talk about the uh, Armenian descents who still live in Turkey and they are hidden Armenians or they're hidden Muslims but in reality they're Armenians and Christians so they um, just try to present that they're not Armenians or they're not Christians so that, um, again it will take place on March 26th at uh, Glendale High School and to conclude, I would just like to invite all of you to present, uh, to be present there at the um, event because it is important to definitely show the support and show that we all do commemorate it and we care about the history. Thank you. That's all. If you have any questions, you're welcome. Thank you so much. No? Thank you. Thank this you. Is on March 26th. That's March 26th at uh, Glendale High School. At 6:30. Um, yes, it starts at 6:30. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Next item, please. That concludes my cards. Next item under public hearings. First one, 9A, is fire chief regarding 2017 annual weed abatement program. 9A1 is a motion to approve abatement order directing the abatement order, um, directing the Agricultural Commission, Director of Weights and Measures, to abate the nuisance on each declared parcel. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Oh, and do we have it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Madam Mayor, yes. I was just informed uh, that um, the winner of the Academy Award for Best Picture is Moonlight. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> um, we do have, sorry, we, we had three cards for the three minute oral communications portion. Oh, oh, oh. These, so we should go back to the oral communication yes. and then we'll read this. Uh, not, Thank okay. you. Sorry. Okay. You're forgiven. Uh, can't take a joke. Okay. <laughs> uh, Chad uh, Kroger. Um, 
Hey, uh, what up, Council? My name is uh, Chad Kroger. I stand before you here today in the midst of some gnarly times. I am a uh, freelance journalist, and after interviewing hundreds of people, I've witnessed firsthand the ever-growing divide between Americans. It's in times like these we need a unifying figure we can all turn to, a beacon of headlights that can guide us down the dusty road. I was 11 years old when I found out my parents were getting divorced. I felt lost, alone, bummed. And it was in that melancholy that my dad took me to see The Fast and the Furious, where for an hour and 47 minutes, I transcended my worries because I had just met my new hero, Paul Walker. Afterwards, at Carl's Jr., I thought about what Paul taught me. The most inspiring thing was the fact that even after Toretto beat him in that first race, Paul still managed to bed his sister, which is pretty inspirational. And I, I just want to go off book here. It wasn't just Fast and the Furious. He inspired me in a ton of other movies as well. You know, Varsity Blues, Skulls, Meet the Deedles, and Eight Below. Um, Paul's on-screen legacy was unfortunately cut short. But that does not mean his impact on society must be cut short as well. Detroit has the RoboCop. Philly has Rocky. We need Paul Walker. That is why I'm proposing that the city erect a 12-foot-tall steel statue of Paul Walker in the downtown area. And I'm also proposing that it be sculpted by none other than Damien Ortega, best known for his installation of White Cube 2003. And also, I believe he's from here, so that would make it extra special. And uh, I would like to thank the council for their time and truly hope you take this into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Sharon Weissman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Devine and council members and uh, staff and everybody listening. I'm Sharon Weissman from Far North Glendale, and I'm here this evening representing the Glendale Human Relations Coalition. And um, as some other previous speakers have said, we do live in interesting times. And in response um, uh, to some unfortunate incidents, uh, I saw a sign like this on uh, Facebook. It says, uh, no matter where you're fr you are from, we're glad you're our neighbor. And um, the, it started with a church, Emmanuel Mennonite Church in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, you can see them on, they have a Facebook page called Welcome Your Neighbors. And their, their original signs were in Spanish, English, and Arabic. And uh, when I saw it, I thought some other languages would be appropriate for Glendale. And they did, on their web page, have <coughs> PDFs for Armenian. So I had Spanish, English, and Armenian put together. And that was about four weeks ago when I first looked at their website. And they had half a dozen other languages, French and, and uh, uh, Somali. And in the, the past few weeks, the last time I looked, they had added Hindi and Japanese and Chinese, German and uh, uh, Swahili, and they've added uh, versions for Canada with neighbors spelled with a U. So I just want to let people know that um, Glendale Human Relations Coalition has these available with little metal uh, stakes. You can put them in, the, in your yard. And uh, we're asking a $5 donation to cover costs. And if anybody would like them, you can email me at GESJA underscore email at uh, yahoo.com. Or if you'd like to get one tonight, we have a few in the car. And my husband will be down in the lobby in the next you know, 15 minutes or so if anyone would like to have them. And um, just. Um, with so much else being spread around, I'd like to spread a little neighborliness and, and um, try to maybe even stimulate conversations as, as people walk their dogs by your yard and things. You might even meet some neighbors you hadn't met before and chat with them. And since I have a, a few more minutes left, uh, today is the deadline uh, to make Arbor Day donations for trees, and we just, we just heard that uh, we lost a lot of trees in our parks and uh, library spaces, and if you'd like to donate, you can still go online, um, glendalebeautiful.org, and you can uh, donate by um, credit card right there. So thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. That's a lovely idea. Both, both of those. 
the signs and the and the trees. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck <coughs> on melancholy. Yeah. Yeah, melancholy. Yeah. Melancholy. I I just I just can't get that out of my head. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Although varsity blues was a good movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. John Ballen. Mayor Devine, Council. I'm not going to back end this. I'll front end it. I'm asking you to instruct GD, uh, GDP to not enforce immigration laws. That is the ask here. Now I'm going to digress. Today would have been my dad's 91st birthday. Uh, his parents came at the turn of the century of the 20th century. They were refugees from Russia, where they were subjected to pogroms. They emigrated here legally. 15 years later, the Armenian genocide happened, and a lot of Armenians <laughs> subsequently came to America, especially after the fall of communism. All of us, many of us in this room were immigrants or sons of immigrants uh, in the last century. My dad fought in World War II. He got an education on a GI Bill. He moved from Pennsylvania to California, built a life, gave me an education. I'm in Glendale now as a homeowner. I have a business in North Glendale. My son's going to the school. Uh, people who help me with my business are undocumented. Uh, kids in my kids' school are undocumented. So what I'm asking is that the precious taxpayer dollars that are being spent on law enforcement be focused on the needs of the community, such as crime, uh, such as traffic enforcement and other issues that you guys are all well aware of. We need more traffic cops. Uh, if instructions come from the federal government to start sort of doing wholesale crackdown in immigration communities on peaceful neighbors, not criminal neighbors, but peaceful neighbors, law-abiding neighbors, it will impede the police department's ability to get undocumented help in solving crimes and will make Glendale as a city overall less safe. Uh, Rampart, you guys remember the Rampart scandal with LAPD? Those guys were terrorizing the neighborhood. Crime shot up. They were part of the crime problem, but as soon as a commission came in and cleaned up that and, and LAPD started doing community policing, it was an area with lots of undocumented people and crime dramatically decreased. So that is a case study in the perils of criminalizing everybody who's undocumented and how difficult that makes it for safety. Uh, in addition to that, we're a nation of immigrants. A lot of undocumented people in the city are not just from Latin America, they are actually Armenian. And so this is an issue that is close to this community and should be considered as such, that this is not just other people, these are people we know and our families. And so uh, the ask is, you get a court order from the federal government, you got to follow that. But Schiff, who spoke at Glendale Community College, has your back. The governor has your back, and we have legal resources to defend the city if it comes out strongly for creating an official, strongly worded sanctuary city, which I'm urging you guys to do in unambiguous language. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Mr. Cho, would you um, respond with our, um, how our police are uh, addressing this issue? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, Chief Castro has uh, put out a policy statement to all of his personnel, uh, including and especially our sworn uh, field personnel, uh, that would indicate that uh, I can read it right here to you uh, with the help of our glasses here. Uh, let's see. Uh, GPD, uh, the Glendale Police Department, does not have the authority nor the responsibility to incarcerate or detain individuals solely based on immigration status. Our fundamental duties are based on public safety serving the community while focusing efforts primarily on crime prevention and law enforcement. Our responsibility is to protect the lives of the community we are, sw we are sworn to serve and honor and the established principles of democracy upon which this country was founded. Uh, that uh, sentiment is uh, what uh, beats true for all of our uh, police and fire personnel and frankly all of our uh, employees here with the city of Glendale, all 1584, until and unless this city council provides different policy leadership uh, that would instruct uh, the activities of the staff. Uh, there is a lawsuit that has been filed up north, I believe, in the city of San Francisco regarding the sanctuary city language and status and what that ultimately means. Mr. Garcia certainly can speak to that. But at this point, uh, based on the council's profile of leadership, 
uh, that has been the stance of our Glendale Police Department and our other employees. And I would uh, venture to say that we all stand behind that statement and, uh, and we'll uh, uh, continue to do so. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item is the hearing uh, on the annual weed abatement program at 9A. Okay, and I'm opening the hearing, and uh, Mr. Ochoa. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is the annual hearing that we have uh, that uh, follows the uh, notice of the hearing that was uh, done earlier this month. Basically, we tell all of the property owners who uh, have properties that have been recognized by L.A. County pursuant to an inspection that their property contains noxious weeds, that uh, they may be uh, abated, they will be abated, and uh, this is the only notice per the county that, uh, that will be undertaken unless the uh, cost of abatement exceeds $750. Uh, that abatement cost will go under the property tax bill. But at this point, uh, this effectively is a protest hearing for anyone who received said notice can come to you. And uh, as Mr. Kasaki and I believe it noted, there is a representative from the county here from uh, Department of Agriculture. So uh, this is a hearing, and we uh, would open to uh, folks that would want to speak to you. I have no cards, so I'm going to assume that there's no one here to protest this uh this issue. So, um, any questions from council? Okay, I will close the hearing. And um, do I have a motion? I move the item. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Carpetti? <coughs> yes. Najarian? Yes. Sunanian? Yes. Mayor Devine? Yes. Next item, please. Next item is a hearing as well, Director of Community Development, regarding extension of an interim ordinance to establish interim development standards and identify procedures for ministerial approval of accessory dwelling units. B1 is a motion to issue and accept report. Two is an ordinance for introduction. Okay, so I will open the hearing. And uh, Mr. Ochoa? Yes, Madam Mayor. This uh, item may be uh, oddly familiar because Council had taken this up uh, just a matter of weeks ago, adopting the interim ordinance and preserving uh, a local definition of what the ADUs would cover by way of state law um, while you uh, had directed staff to prepare a permanent ordinance, if you will, that would comply with the spirit and intent of what the state had been outlining. So uh, as you recall, we had 45 days to come back with you with an extension pursuant to the law of that urgency ordinance, uh, the uh, or the interim ordinance, rather. Uh, rather than wait for the full 45 days, what with the uh, municipal election coming, transition, we're going to have at least one new council member. Uh, we uh, think it's prudent at this point to come back to you sooner than later. Ask for the mandated uh, extension uh, for uh, the 10 months and 15 days. Uh, if you want to extend again one more time beyond that, you can. If the work gets done in less time, certainly the council would be able to adopt an ordinance in, in a shorter period of time, but it at least gives the planning division staff the opportunity uh, to prepare said ordinance, route it through planning commission, community stakeholders, and ultimately make its way back to city council in due course. So uh, this is basically a step in the process. I would uh, liken it to uh, you know, using a timeout in the third quarter versus at the end of the fourth quarter, uh, just simply based on conditions that we can see towards the end of this particular game, again, with the uh, elections, with schedules, um, and wanting to make sure we comply with the 45 days, uh, and not wanting to have a period of, that lapses where the interim ordinance is no longer in effect. So it's uh, nothing has changed from March or from February 7th. We're just asking that you extend the ordinance to the 10 months, 15 days. Any comments? So we... Pardon? She did. I did. Yeah. Uh, so we're extending, extending it to 10 months and 15 days. 15 days from the date that we introduced the ordinance. It's, it's from the date that uh, the initial ordinance is set to expire on March 24th. So a maximum of one year. So it'll be a year from the day you adopt, we originally adopted the ordinance. And within that one year, can we can we revisit this this this? This item, or our hope is that we, we will. To? Yes, uh, it, barring something that would that would drain staff resources from the planning shop away from this effort, our direction from council was to work with haste to bring this back to you sooner than later. Um, but that'll take more than 45 days, and so this is just that next step in the process to extend the interim ordinance to uh, we're we're saying 10 months, 15 days. It could be shorter. Hopefully it will be shorter that we will be back before you with the final ordinance. And before the final ordinance is drafted, basically, are we going to have a discussion on the council to give some direction as to where we want to be? 
We would well, like to do a couple. That's a good question. Um, we would like to do a couple things. We uh, certainly would be going through our normal process where we go to planning commission and likely go out to uh, stakeholder groups. Uh, but through <coughs> briefings that we would have pursuant to city attorney's office, uh, we can understand where the sensitivities are from council. And you've given us a great deal of of what you would like to see uh, individually by way of the public hearing that was held earlier this month. But as it will go forward and it's a public document, I expect, like other ordinances, you certainly would have uh, the ability to say, I like this, I don't like that. And then in the context of the adoption of the ordinance, um, it, 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 that you would be able to, to affect those changes if, if you didn't see everything that you wanted to see or you saw too much of any one thing. Um, to the extent that we have introduced ordinances before, and rather than adopt them, send them back to staff, we make additional changes, bring it back to you again, and then it gets introduced, I would expect that it's something as, um, as uh, uh, dialogue inspiring as this item had been earlier that we'll probably be bringing it back a couple times to you in the context of preparing that final ordinance. Yeah, because I want the community to have a chance to, to give their input yeah. uh, as to what their wants and likes and needs are and before it goes to planning commission. I think that'll be that'll be the order of the day by way of uh, interaction with a lot of the neighborhood groups. And, and keep in mind, the planning commission is part of the <coughs> process where the public does provide input. But I think it would, in this case, given um, the amount of complexity involved and, and the fact that we've not had an ordinance regulating these, it would make sense to bring it to council to at least get some feedback and have, have the public provide input um, before we formally start putting uh, pen to paper and, and drafting actual ordinance language. Thanks. Absolutely. So what we're doing is just giving staff more time to uh, develop the ordinance, uh, give all of uh, to give staff the time for outreach to the community, so everyone has uh, a, a, a chance to um, uh, give input on the ordinance, and then uh, we will make the final decision eventually. Okay. I will uh, have no cards for this item, so I'll close the hearing. And do I have a motion? I'll move the item. Do I have second. A second? So second. that's the motion. Oh, that's, uh, yes. Well, there's a motion and there's the or motion introduction of the ordinance. I'll move the motion. Okay. And we have a second. second. A roll call, please. Council members Garpedian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Devine? Thank you. Yes. And now I'll the uh, introduction. Okay. And a second, and that's all we need, right? Or no, we, we just need the introduction. Need Thank you. Introduction second. of ordinances. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Next item. Next item is oral communication. Discussion is limited time. The item is not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the council may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And the city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. Okay. Daniel Brotman. Hi, Mayor Devine and council members, staff. Um, thank you for giving me time to make a brief statement. Hopefully, <coughs> I won't take the whole five minutes. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Brotman. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at Glendale College. Um, I moved to Glendale about a year and a half ago, and I uh, just want to say thank you to all of you for your part in making Glendale such a great place to call home. I hope to stay here uh, for as long as I can. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, as you know, uh, Congressman Schiff held a town hall last week. I know, uh, Mayor Devine, you were there. Uh, maybe all of you were there. I don't know. Um, in any case, we heard some very heartbreaking stories about people being affected by the policies and rhetoric uh, coming out of Washington, whether it's the so-called travel ban uh, the newly aggressive immigration enforcement, uh, or the increase in hate crimes. Um, I'm sure you've all read about the killing uh, of uh, an Indian immigrant in Iowa by somebody who said, get out of my country, very disturbing. Uh, or recently the death threats uh, uh, to Jewish community centers all around the country. In fact, I saw something that yesterday there were 13 um, uh, different uh, threats made to Jewish uh, community centers and synagogues, as well as toppling of headstones at ceremony at, at cemeteries. So, uh, it's a frightening time for many of us. Uh, but um, I feel the fear is most immediate 
for the families of undocumented immigrants right now, and that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, I understand, I accept that every country needs to be able to control its borders, and uh, those seeking to come to this country should follow the rules. Uh, at the same time, I know that there are many hardworking, contributing people in our community. Um, they've been living among us for sometimes decades, sometimes for most of their lives. Um, they've been our, become our friends. Um, not only that, from a purely selfish perspective, we rely on their services, their consumer spending, uh, the taxes that they pay. Um, in, in stepping up the deportations, um, the president says he's only going after violent criminals, but we know that's not true. Uh, many people are being rounded up that are, are guilty only of misdemeanors. And in fact, nobody really knows what ICE's instructions are, which adds to the fear. Uh, people are wondering if they can go outside to shop, uh, if they can go to the doctor, if they can send their kids to school. I see it you know, in my classes. About 30 to 40 percent of my students are Latino, and there's fear, and there's, there's crying, and uh, it's um, difficult to teach. It's difficult for students to be successful when they're worried about whether their parents will be home when they get home. Um, um, so, um, in, in general, the whole policy is, is being carried out the way the travel ban was carried out in a, ca in a chaotic, haphazard way that's really designed to put people on edge. Uh, the city of Glendale obviously can't stop ICE from coming here to follow the orders that they're getting from their higher-ups, but uh, we're under no obligation to make their job easier. Uh, I believe strongly that we should not share any information um, and I appreciate the statement that you read out from um, uh, the police chief, uh, which I'm not familiar with in detail. Um, so much of this is probably covered, but maybe not everything. I think uh, we need to be clear that information sharing will not take place. We'll not allow uh, ICE to use any of our uh, facilities in any way. Um, we should not allow them to use our police, of course, to assist in any way. We should never proactively turn people over to them. Um, I would feel differently if this were a measured policy that was truly targeting dangerous criminals, but we know that that's not what this is about. Um, I understand through the grapevine that some people are hoping um, to work with you, um, and I don't know if they've come to the staff yet to craft a resolution, because I, I feel um, that um, the statement you read doesn't feel strong enough. I think we need to do something that's that's more public, that's, that's um, clear. Uh, whether we call ourselves a sanctuary city, I know that's loaded, and, I, and you know, I'm not going to uh, make an opinion about whether that term itself should or shouldn't be used, but I think we should make a very strong statement, and we should publicize it widely to calm fears in the community and to show our Latino neighbors and friends that we have their back. So I urge you to work together and design uh, and pass the strongest possible resolution. Thank you. I, d I just want to say that uh, that town hall uh, that uh, Congressman Schiff um, held was powerful, and um, uh, I did uh, learn from it. Uh, he mentioned uh, that uh, we have and have there have been those that are creating a culture of fear in our society, and I regret that can only say that um, we will follow the police chief's uh, uh, statement and uh, stand by that. And uh, I think everyone in our community should know that um, we care about them. We are listening. We hear you. And uh, when the time comes for us to do, to act, I, then we will. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Broadman. Uh, let's see. Mike Mohill. Good evening, council members. My name is Mike Mohill. Mayor Devine, I was disappointed again two weeks ago when you, when you were informed, and I informed the public, that leaving Calvary's cannot be done, and it is up to the state legislature. Even though I already provided you and the public with many agencies who had already canceled their contracts with CalPERS. 
Professor Harry Zavos, a very well-respected attorney in Glendale, also heard what Professor Roderick Kiewick from Caltech said about leaving CalPERS, that it, that it would cost us more money up front, but in the long run, it would be cheaper for the stakeholders. Mayor Devine, I, offer you a list of, I offered you a list of small cities and agencies who decided not to wait for the state to rescue them, but instead paid the blackmailers, CalPERS, their monies and canceled their contracts. Mayor Devine, as a retired school teacher, you are currently receiving a government pension for life. Your husband, a former government administrator for the city of Los Angeles, is receiving a six-figure income in retirement for life. Our city manager, assistant city manager, city attorney, and Director of Finance will all be receiving outrageous retirement pension benefits for life. Former City Manager Jim Starbird, who retired a few years ago, is receiving yearly retirement pension benefit of $264,000 for life. Former Assistant City Manager Bob McFall, yearly $163,000 for life. Former Chief of Police Ron DePompa, yearly $214,000 for life. Former city attorney Scott Howard, $196,000 for life, for life yearly, and the list goes on and on. Bob Elliott, director of finance, pulled the wool over your eyes when he stated that the average safety personnel retirement pension benefit was about $57,000 and non-safety was about $30,000 was that average based on retirees since 1940, perhaps 1980, or 1960, or you name the number. Mayor Devine, might not look at the average for the past five or 10 years, where today we have about 800 city employees earning between 100 dollars and $300,000 plus, and their retirement pension benefit will be of equal magnitude. Council members, why are you accepting the misleading figures from staff of a, of a retirement pension of $57,000 or $30,000 as insignificant or very little when the average annual Social Security payment is about $16,000 and the maximum, even if your name was Bill Gates, is $36,000. Mayor Devine and Council Members, doesn't it bother you to know today we have more police officers and firefighters in retirement than currently working for, to protect our, 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 our pub, the, excuse me, protect the public. And yet Councilman Nigerian continues to want to have the best, the very best employees that money can buy. This council has left the people of Glendale in 2015 with a staggering $22,710 per household <coughs> debt to CalPERS and still growing. City manager, Director of Finance, Mayor Devine, and Council Members. Please explain to your constituents our $22,710 per Glendale household debt to CalPERS is, has distinguished our Jewel City as the 33rd worst of all 509 California cities. I would suggest you contact Professor Kiewit from Caltech and Nobel laureate Professor Stampy from Stanford University to come before this council and have them explain how getting out of CalPERS is doable and if you truly have the desire. Mrs. Devine, with all due respect, I am here to tell you, your colleagues and the public, the city has the option to cancel CalPERS contracts. All you have to do is have the desire and vision to pay our CalPERS blackmailers up front so that in the long run, it would be cheaper for the taxpayers. Mayor Devine, I love my Jewel City Glendale. Please stop misleading the public that we cannot get out of CalPERS. Yes, it will be hard and costly, but in the long run, it will be cheaper for the stakeholders and their children. It is not a state problem. It is a Glendale problem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mulhill, with all due respect, I, I venture to, to guess that if we could come up with $1.2 billion today in cash, you may sit down, we probably would think about it, wouldn't we, Mr. Ochoa? Certainly. 
Certainly you, you would that. have to, to think about it, but that's the, the fallacy in the argument that is continually proffered by Mr. Mohill. Some of the cities that he's referring to have four retirees that, that are cities that, uh, and even then struggled after they left CalPERS. I think he gravely <coughs> misrepresents the meeting at which you were at, um, in which the, uh, the professor from Caltech had acknowledged that if you wanted to leave, it would be extraordinarily costly, and so therefore you probably ought not leave or wouldn't leave, certainly not unless and until the state of California changed the state law, and after that law was fully adjudicated, as it most certainly would be in a state like California. California. So it's wonderful for Mr. Mohill to get up repeatedly and offer a great deal of partial information and use the claims of partial information against other folks. Uh, but I think he has to at least look in the mirror and say the things that he's saying really aren't necessarily very true. Some of it may sound true. Some of it may feel true. Most of it is not, unfortunately. Certainly it's out of context. Thank you. Elizabeth Batanza. Hello, City Council, uh, Officers of the Law, thank you. Um, I just wanted to second these comments of Dan and John. Um, I was part of the group that went to the Glendale Unified School District to urge them to pass a stronger resolution a couple weeks ago um, at their board meetings. And while they had originally come out with resolution language to have schools, Glendale Public Schools, be safe zones, it was our belief that it was not strong enough or precise enough, and I would just echo that. Um, while I'm glad that the chief of police has issued that statement, it sends a much stronger and broader message if it's coming from the mayor and from the city council. Um, we have plenty of issues, namely with speeding, which my five-year-old back there can tell you about, um, that I would much rather have law enforcement uh, taking care of things like traffic, speeding, um, petty crime, theft, like things like that, rather than um, being co-opted to participate in these uh, ICE raids or to cooperate with um, policies at the federal level that I think we will look back on in history and be ashamed of what's going on. So I just wanted to urge you that we look forward as members of the community working with you on passing a resolution, uh, sanctuary city, whatever you want to call it, but something that is precise, specific, um, and clearly, more clearly outlines what will and will not happen uh, in terms of law enforcement. So thank you. And uh, I'm happy to pay my taxes for the retirement of teachers and police officers. <laughs> I'm a teacher myself. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chinook Ramirez. Thank you. For the record, I'd like to complain. I just had Aaron, the young man who stands behind and helps you fill out the forms, and his supervisor, J John, standing behind, were rude, obnoxious, and told me to not disturb the meeting. I've never, ever disturbed a meeting. I simply said, wow, oh, and that was signed for him to come over and single me out. These two idiots, Aaron and John. If you have no class, then get the hell out. If Let's you can let Ms. Chinook, please. Yes. Let's refrain from that language. No, it's a refrain. It's, no, again, out of anger please. and out of rightfully because I respect myself, I stand in myself, and I believe in what I do. I fight hard for what I do. I will not be crucified or demonized by somebody who thinks they can stick their finger tell me I'm disturbing the meeting when I'm sitting back there quiet like I've always done for the several years I've come here. Ever, never have I been attacked. Ever. Having said that, you've got some of these cocky gringos who come here and talk about abuses by Washington. Well, let me make it very plain and clear. Washington, for the first time in years, Donald Trump, el jefe, the great Moses, has actually enforced the rule of law, something that the justices, judges, nor attorneys have been able to do. Furthermore, many of us are homeless because of attorneys falsely, falsely representing you. And I've got names of them that I will be disclosing too. Again, unethical attorneys, unethical attorneys who don't abide by the rule of law. Does that make a man racist because he wants to stand for the rule of law, enforce the rules across America? That's, he's not a racist. 
Finally, we have a man who stands for something, and he wants to defend the American people. Legal, law-abiding American people. I came here by the rule of law. I didn't swim the Rio Grande. I am proud of that. I fought hard of it. And by the way, I didn't join a gang. I didn't graffiti. I don't vandalize. I don't steal. But God forbid I stand up to any of these cocky idiots. Then what happens? I get thrown out, I get banned, or I get attacked. I believe in myself and I stand for myself because I respect myself. That's why I'm here. And furthermore, I am proud to say that Donald Trump is a man of greatness. He fought all the way to where he is. He is elegant, he is opulent, he believes in taste, and he loves America. Something that these illegal ga gangbangers and aliens don't believe in. Look at the graffiti, look at the Latino communities. They're a disaster. And they talk about Rampart, East LA, I live there. And what was it? It was shameful. You have vandalism, illegal break-ins, um, graffiti. You have drugs. And people like me who stood up and called the police and exposed the gangs, the drugs, the graffiti, the vandalism. I didn't see him or the teacher or his son or the father of the son exposing them. They wouldn't stick their necks up because they'd be, home, they'd be homeless and or gang stalked. So again, who has the balls to stand up? Certainly not that cocky gringo because they need, or the teacher, they don't need, they don't want to stick their hands out. They got children. They're not going to expose the gangbangers, the drug dealers. They're not going to do that like I did because they'd be living on the streets. That teacher, no, he just wants more Latinos so he can have a pension. I'm not thinking about my career. I'm thinking about what I have to do for this country, and that is fight for the human dignity, the decency, the rightfulness of this country. We have gone down the tubes. We have every form of cesspool. We have drugs. We have crack, cocaine, and, and every form of, of just cesspool trash. Nobody stands for human dignity anymore. Nobody. And nobody will stick their heads out and their necks out. Certainly not many officers, but those few who have been killed in the line of duty, God bless them, because they stood for something and they got killed. May they rest in peace. But I don't see any of you stick your necks out for anybody, and certainly for the people, the American people that nobody cared for, or the beloved military veterans that nobody cared for or stuck their heads out for him or for them. What about Jan Brewer? What about Sheriff George Pyle? They're being crucified because they're standing for the rule of law. Do any of you do that? No, but I'm proud to stand for something like they do. And they also stand and protect the people of America, the people of America, the legal law-abiding American <coughs> citizens, middle-class America who is today homeless, impoverished, and that is on the streets. And our military veterans, they are on the streets today. Who is helping them? No one. Human Relations Commission and all these other commissions are too busy aiding and abetting and, and harboring these fugitives, criminal, illegal wetbacks and gangbangers. But nobody protects the American citizen. And God bless the Grand Moses. Donald Trump, he is protecting the American people. God bless America. Mr. Mayor, is your time Thank you so very much. So God bless Donald Trump. Thank you. Well, there were a lot of things in there that I disagree with, but I'll just kind of uh, not. Uh, does anyone have anything to respond? Uh, may uh, Sinanian? Would you? And I, I. I mean. No. no. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> given the circumstances, maybe we shouldn't respond. Right. Yeah. Oh, our um, our outreach team has worked with Ms. Ramirez, so I, I would not. Right. Okay, next item, please. Motion to adjourn and a second, please. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second? Still, yeah. Second. We're adjourned at 725. Thank you and good night. Thank you.
I can tell you want me. Mm-hmm.